Welcome to the Silicon Fox podcast, where we explore the habits and stories of high performers. Join us as we dive into their journeys, analyze live blood tests, and break down the science behind key biomarkers to help you optimize your health. I'm your host, Mitchell Eschner, an ex-pro soccer player, a current sponsored hybrid athlete, a health tech founder, and a longevity enthusiast. Today's episode is about a subject that most people take for granted until it begins to interfere with their energy, workouts, or daily life, hydration. More specifically, we're going to explore why dehydration leads to muscle weakness. While many of us are aware that water is important for survival, the scientific reality is that hydration is directly tied to how our muscles generate force, how long they can sustain that force, how they recover, and even how they age. Muscles are composed of approximately 75% water. This single fact highlights just how central hydration is to their function. Even mild dehydration can change the way muscles operate at the cellular level. Research published in the Journal of Athletic Training has demonstrated that losing as little as 2% of body weight through dehydration can result in up to 20% loss in strength and 30% reduction in muscular endurance. To put this in perspective, if you weigh 150 pounds, that means just a 3-pound loss in water weight can impair your performance dramatically. This can happen after a single workout in the heat, yet the effects extend far beyond sports. The reason dehydration is so detrimental is because water is not merely about satisfying thirst. It is the medium through which nearly every physiological process in your muscle occurs. Water helps deliver nutrients and oxygen, it maintains blood volume and circulation, it regulates temperature, and it enables the chemical and electrical signaling required for contraction. Without proper hydration, these processes begin to falter, and the result is weakness, fatigue, and in the long term, accelerated muscle loss. One of the most important mechanisms linking hydration to muscle function is electrolyte balance. Electrolytes are minerals such as sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium, and they carry electrical charges that control contraction and relaxation. Sodium and potassium work together through the sodium-potassium pump to generate the electrical signals that initiate contraction. Calcium is then released inside the muscle cell to trigger contraction itself. Magnesium, in turn, allows the muscle fibers to relax. When you're dehydrated, you do not lose just water. You also lose these key electrolytes through sweat, urine, and other mechanisms. The result is an imbalance that interferes with contraction, producing cramping, twitching, and a sense of weakness. Dehydration also alters circulation. A lower fluid volume makes blood thicker and harder to pump, which increases strain on the heart. As a consequence, less oxygen and fewer nutrients are delivered to the muscles. Studies have found that dehydration can reduce blood flow to muscle tissue by as much as 20%. This not only impairs energy supply, but also slows the removal of waste and products like lactic acid. The familiar burning sensation that builds during exercise is magnified when blood flow is compromised and recovery takes longer. Another critical area where hydration exerts influence is in energy production. Muscles require adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, to contract. The pathways that generate ATP, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain are all water-dependent. When you're dehydrated, these processes slow down, meaning your muscles literally produce less energy. This biochemical bottleneck explains why dehydration does not just make you feel tired psychologically, but also reduces your capacity to produce physical work. Recognizing the signs of dehydration is essential, yet many of them are subtle. Thirst itself is a delayed signal. By the time you feel thirsty, you're already mildly dehydrated. One of the earliest signs is noticeable reduction in grip strength, something as simple as struggling to open a jar. That would normally be easy. You might also feel unusually fatigued during routine tasks experience cramps or twitching in your calves, or notice that your exercise performance is lower than expected despite adequate sleep and nutrition. Recovery after workouts may also feel delayed, and soreness can linger longer than usual. As dehydration progresses, these symptoms intensify. Climbing stairs or carrying groceries may feel disproportionately difficult. Muscles may tremble during exertion, cramps become frequent, and coordination can deteriorate. At that stage, hydration status requires immediate correction. Certain populations are particularly vulnerable to dehydration-related muscle weaknesses. Athletes and people who are physically active lose large amounts of fluid through sweat. Older adults face risks because their sense of thirst declines with age and because they generally have lower total body water content. Outdoor workers or those in hot environments are consistently challenged by fluid loss. Medications such as diuretics or blood pressure drugs also shift fluid balance. Health conditions like diabetes or kidney disease further impair regulation. Even people on low-carbohydrate or ketogenic diets face increased risk because the early stages of those diets deplete glycogen stores, and glycogen is stored in water. When glycogen is lost, water is lost along with it. Monitoring hydration requires more than waiting until you feel thirsty. A simple method is to check urine color. Pale yellow suggests good hydration, while darker shades indicate a deficit. Another approach is to track body weight before and after exercise. A 2% reduction signals a meaningful drop in performance capacity. On a clinical level, blood tests provide even more insight. Key markers include sodium, potassium, chloride, blood urea, and nitrogen, and creatinine. An elevated ratio of blood urea and nitrogen to creatinine often indicates dehydration. For athletes and individuals with health conditions, monitoring these biomarkers can offer valuable, actionable data. So how much should you actually drink? 
The common advice of eight glasses a day is a rough guideline, but hydration needs vary widely depending on body size, activity, environment, and overall health. A more personalized starting point is to aim for about half your body weight in ounces per day. For someone weighing 160 pounds, that would be eight ounces, around two and a half liters. From there, adjustments should be made for exercise and climate. For every hour of activity, an additional 12 to 16 ounces of fluid is recommended. On hot or humid days, intake should increase by 20 to 30%. And water alone is not always sufficient. Electrolyte balance must be considered, especially if you are sweating heavily or exercising for long durations. Foods can supply much of what is needed. Potassium comes from bananas, spinach, and sweet potatoes. Magnesium can be obtained from nuts, seeds, and dark leafy greens. Calcium is available in dairy products or fortified plant-based options. Sodium, often vilified, is in fact essential when consumed from quality sources such as sea salt or Himalayan salt. For prolonged or intense exercise, electrolyte supplements or sports drinks can be useful, though caution is needed because many commercial sports drinks contain unnecessary amounts of sugar. Timing of hydration is also important. Drinking 16 to 20 ounces of water upon walking helps replenish overnight losses. Consuming the same amount two to three hours before exercise primes the body. During exercise, small, steady amounts, six to eight ounces every 15 to 20 minutes, are optimal. After activity, weighing yourself can guide recovery. For every pound loss, 16 to 24 ounces should be consumed. Throughout the day, fluid intake should continue steadily, but tapering off a couple of hours before bedtime helps prevent sleep disruption from nighttime urination. Are you a health coach or running a health course and looking to level up your client's experience? With Cyfox Health at-home blood test, you can deliver lab-quality blood work right to your client's door. Seamlessly ship samples back for fast and actionable results. Personalize every consult with the data that matters. Clients who complete a Cyfox test are 60% more likely to enroll in a paid program after their consult compared to those who only join a sales call. If you're ready to give your clients the edge, go to cyfoxhealth.com forward slash partner. And as a Silicon Fox podcast listener, enjoy 10% off your first bulk order. If muscle weakness has already developed due to dehydration, recovery involves more than simply drinking water rapidly. Overconsumption of plain water without electrolytes can lead to hyponatremia, a dangerous dilution of sodium in the blood. Instead, rehydration should be gradual, with 16 to 24 ounces consumed per hour along with electrolytes from food or supplements. Light stretching or gentle movement can help restore circulation, but strenuous exercise should be avoided until strength returns. If weakness persists despite rehydration or if symptoms include confusion, dizziness, or rapid heartbeat, medical attention is necessary. The implications of hydration extend far beyond immediate performance. Chronic dehydration can contribute to long-term reductions in muscle mass, increase the risk of injury, slow recovery, and accelerate the process of muscle aging. There's growing evidence that maintaining adequate hydration may help preserve muscle tissue into older age and play a role in preventing psychopenia, the age-related loss of muscle mass and strength. Since muscle mass is one of the strongest predictors of longevity and functional independence and aging, the importance of hydration cannot be overstated. Developing sustainable hydration habits is key. This might mean keeping water accessible throughout your day, setting reminders if you often forget to drink, choosing foods with high water content such as cucumbers, watermelon, and citrus fruits, and using both subjective and objective markers to monitor your hydration status. By taking control of your hydration, you support your muscles, your performance, and your long-term health. The connection between dehydration and muscle weakness is a reminder that as something as simple as water can be powerful determinant of health and longevity. Recognizing the early signs of fluid loss, implementing effective hydration strategies, and tailoring your intake to your individual needs allows you to prevent weakness, fatigue, and long-term decline. Hydration is not just a matter of comfort. It's a matter of sustaining strength, resilience, and vitality across your lifespan. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope you gained some insight into this health habit. If you found this episode helpful, be sure to subscribe and share it with others who might benefit. And as always, I encourage you to take charge of your health by staying informed and being proactive about your body signals. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on the Silicon Fox Podcast. 